when tournament time comes, we all know there's going to be something adverse that comes. And I feel really inspired to play golf and uh, and play great, you know, and try to leave legendary performances. I, I typically try to do that wherever I go, but, you know, it's an honor to come here and play and, and still play in the game that I love and the game that I loved when I was a kid. I'm not really sure if Americans actually know how much of a deal this act like this really is. The disc golf scene in Europe and in Nor Norway in general has grown tremendous. I feel like this uh, place is uh, very like magical. It's very nurturing. But at the same time, I feel like it's almost hard to like be here and take this as a job trip. But at the same time, I have to remind myself, okay, I'm here to do one thing to play disc golf. It's amazing. I mean, it's just, if you're, if you're a nature lover, it's, it's got everything you want. It's got the ice baths, it's got the hiking, it's got waterfalls, it's got fishing, and then you come here and also have the amazing disc golf course with the amazing views. Just such a pure country. I think that's a good, uh, good word for it, pure. If you're into nature, if you're into fjords and mountains and all the beautiful lakes, um, you definitely would want to go up here. There is no room for like one bad round in the middle of the tournament and I think that's the biggest thing for me at least to have like a consistent play uh, all weekend. Coming here it's like this is the disc golf I grew up on you know shaping these these mid-ranges and powering up on some fairways and stuff like that you actually get to see the disc kind of just glide. It's been a lot of fun and, and this course actually still has it a lot and obviously Finland next week will uh, showcase that as well. Only two more weeks out here. So I'm uh, looking forward to these. I've been working towards them this whole trip. Um, the you know this one being the elite series and the next one being the major. So. So late this morning, and uh, we got about 20 minute drive left to the airport before we do three flights to Norway. Because um, we're going a little bit more northwest than last time. So. This is going to be a lot different looking from everything I've heard and seen. Um, I'm looking forward to it, but not looking forward to the multiple flights. Hopefully it's easy. Now it's time for the big boy events. So if you like to read anything online, this is the event that will have all the Americans and will not be this soft competition that everyone likes to say online. It'll be, uh, it'll be against the, the players that I uh, am apparently running for. So, it should be a fun time. It was what I dreamed Norway would be. Just mountain, water, cool little like towns where you just see houses on the water. And it was uh, about an hour, hour drive from the airport to Vestnes and uh, just beautiful, beautiful. A lot of fun to battle. Makes me excited uh, because uh, this is the first elite series in Europe ever. And uh, this is the time to be clicking and having everything work because nothing but big events from here on out. Sibit, Paul, nice to meet you. Welcome to Everos. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, beautiful out here. Yeah. Um, this is uh, technically my second time in Norway. Technically? Yeah, good. Well, I was just here two weeks ago, so. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. 
So, uh, a lot different than Oslo. Pulling into the course, this trip I was very fortunate I was able to stay on the property. So like the view out the house, once we dropped, my, dropped our stuff off, got the bedroom and just saw the course, saw the hills, saw the uh, fjords. Every night if I was up until about 2 a.m. I could see the sunset. So uh, beautiful. And then, uh, then I got to meet the people. I got to meet Sievert, whose farm it actually is, Brage, who is uh, the owner of the house that we stayed in, which is Sievert's cousin. And then uh, the man who makes the show happen and is the, the life of the party, that is Joran. Joran is the life of the party. So those three guys were the big three. I want to wish everybody good luck with the tournament. And don't hesitate if it's something we can help you with. We are there for you. And nothing is impossible. Those three, those are the key gears in all this. All This doesn't happen without their contribution, without their drive, without their passion, without their hard work, without their logistical mastermind of bringing all this together. And all three of them are, have all three different strengths and they all bring it together so perfectly. Outside of that, the PCS staff and the crew and various other volunteers and Frude and Thomas these guys are known for like seven years now. They make this tournament happen and it wouldn't happen without them. Uh, my name is uh, Sivert Øveros. Uh, I am from Øveros here in Norway and I'm the TD and course designer of PCS Open. In the beginning, uh, I think it was just uh, seeing the flight of the disc that got me hooked. And later I started getting more and more interested in making a course and designing a course and uh, yeah, just kept on from there. My name is uh, Jöran Jelsten Lufal. I'm um, born in Trondheim. I moved uh, here to Øveros in uh, 2009. And uh, I started to uh, play disc golf together with Sievert and Brage uh, in 2013. It started with Sievert, started to play regular golf. And he started to build some golf holes at the, uh, his backyard and uh, I tried to play some golf together with him and we started to make some more golf holes. We had golf holes in front of my house and in the backyard. We saw some disc in, discs in, uh, in Sievert's backyard uh, and I asked Brage, what is this? Uh, uh, he said uh, this is some frisbees that Sievert bought. Uh, and, um, I said, okay, maybe you should stop and try. And I replied to him, is that even a sport? This was the summer of 2013. And he said, yes. And he showed me his iPhone. <laughs> I found it on the YouTube yesterday. <laughs> and then, yeah, why not? And uh, he bought two or three start packages with discs. And we, um started to make these uh, homemade baskets and put around in the garden and all around the barn. And uh, for many years, there was just us and a couple of other friends. And we really did it just for, for fun. We liked it so much. So from that uh, beginning, we was throwing every day. Now, time to play the course. Beautiful piece of property. Uh, unique design, I was actually thrown off a little bit by one and two kind of crisscross fairways, but it just works uh, with the tee times and stuff. You know, you play one and then play two and you're out of there because they're both par threes. But uh, um, just knowing what it takes to build a course and, and maintain a course, because I've had my own personal courses before, it's not easy. So knowing that that's their property and farm as well and uh, that they have other businesses besides just maintaining a disc golf course. It's incredible to see what they have out there, what they've done out there. And it's not just the course itself. They kind of put together all these pieces and these little Easter eggs throughout the course for people to come and enjoy. So that was just day one. <laughs> just like a perfect first day. We are going to leave the course right now, go get dinner and hit up a grocery store because as you can tell, if you look out here to the right, 
we are in an incredible place, but kind of the middle of nowhere. So we'll be getting groceries for the week and living here on the property. So it's a blessing and a curse because I think we're going to be woken up as soon as the players start to arrive and warm up and play the tournament. But you know, it's a, it's a give. It's a, it's a love hate kind of relationship. So we'll see how it goes. So after playing the first round, um, went in and met with Sievert, who owns the farm, and uh, his grandfather's name is actually Sievert, and uh, their family name is Ovros. The whole area is kind of Ovros, like it's a farm and then kind of the town there. And uh, a lot of them have family connections, cousins, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, all sorts of it. So it's a very big family area there. Ovros is located on the western coast in the middle of Norway. Uh, the Överås farm has been in our family for a couple of hundred years. My grandfather and my grand-grandfather uh, have been building this and farmed this area for generations. Uh, when I was a kid, we had cattle uh, down in the barn uh, where, uh, where the tournament center is today. And uh, I often uh, ran out to my uncle and uh, were together with him in the in the barn uh, milking cows before I went to school. <laughs> so <laughs> um, they've been uh, working hard to hold this area for for the animals. Until 1994, my dad decided he wanted to quit normal farming and he started developing the farm into something else. We were selling Christmas trees and we're having kind of events and uh, parties and uh, yeah. Gradually the barn uh, developed into something else than a barn. In 2013 we, we started to play disc golf uh, with these homemade baskets and we were, the baskets were located just around the barn. Uh, on the gravel, mostly around the barn. I think both myself and Jöran and Brage found it very fascinating in the beginning and we were really hooked playing disc golf each night. Also during the night in the summer when the light was, was uh, lasting long. Brage is actually my cousin and all the um, five mo closest neighbors to me are uh, relatives. It's my sister and my aunt and my other cousin and we are all living more or less on the on the disc golf course. The first basket we placed out in 2014 is the basket that we play on the tournament today uh, as hole number one and we set the tee where the tee on hole number one is today. So we had uh, pretty high uh, <laughs> goals. We wanted to make a, a real course and that's how we set it. Hole number one, this is how it should be. Yeah, we played casually for a while and uh, by the end of 2013 we, we founded this uh, club organization. When we started to, to uh, build uh, the course that you're playing today, it's uh, of course uh, there was a lot of uh, we had to move a lot of uh, trees, roots, stones uh, to make the fairways and Sievert have been using his excavator for hours and hours and hours. I think the first course we had was like six holes. Every year we, we, we found a new area that we, want, that we wanted to build a hole on and uh, and by 2016, we had the first 18-hole course up and running. I said to Brage and Sievert uh, in 2015 uh, that we should uh, have a tournament in 2016. Uh, uh, and uh, this tournament, I said, uh, have to be big, huge tournament. Uh, and um, the first year, I think it was Avery Jenkins was coming here. And uh, already uh, there, we can see that this can be a big uh, event, uh, tournament. And in 2016, they had the first PCS Open tournament, 
which they invited me to, and I was the only American player to come here with a bunch of Norwegian players, several Finnish players, Swedish players, and maybe a mix of other European countries, but I was the only American here. And we all partied and hung out in that clubhouse, being the front edge of the garage. That's the humble beginnings of where this tournament started. We went into the garage and maybe a few other areas where they had the scoring, but everything took place right there, central location. And uh, it was like very much like a backyard tournament, but they were so passionate and so driven. They're all about having a good time and creating an awesome experience. Uh, at the end of the tournament, they, they pride themselves on, you know, having that experience and having that party atmosphere. So it's not only about the disc golf, but it is about um, having a good time too, enjoying where you, where you travel to and where you're, uh, you know, the camaraderie of the event. When we started the tournament the first year, we, we wanted to have a player's party in the barn. Then we see that uh, that was uh, really good. Uh, we, we started to make trips for the players. Uh, and it's, the events is, yeah, it's, a, it's very important of this tournament because uh, and take care of the players, take care of the sponsors, uh, the volunteers, of course. Uh, it's it's uh, very important and uh, I think uh, if we didn't do that, we haven't been where we are today. But in 2016, I was I was supposed to win this tournament. They came, they, they flew me over here expecting me to win, I'm supposed to win this event, and I didn't win. Um, it was actually won by uh, one of the nicest guys in disc golf, uh, Stale. He lives up in Christian Sand, about two hours north of here. And like I said, nicest guy, smile on his face, always happy to see you. And he ended up playing stellar, played so good, ended up taking it down, ended up winning the event. And at the players party, I remember showing up and they had, uh, they had a really nice dinner. And at the end, they had these cakes, these, these custom cakes made up. And one of the, in both cakes, one was a, a Star T-Bird with the logo and the graphic of the Star T-Bird. And the other one was the AJ Star Destroyer as cakes, expecting me to win, and I didn't win. And I was like, wow, just the, the red carpet they rolled out for me to be here, and then for me not to succeed and win the event. But I was humble in, uh, humble in defeat and enjoyed my experience. And I was like, wow, this is epic. I need to tell everybody about it and try to broadcast and put the wood out there as much as possible. Uh, we really thought it was a big success because we had a lot of play players and uh, we had a lot of fun. And a lot of people came from Oslo and uh, Trondheim and all the players said that this is a great place building a frisbee course and you have been doing a great job. I think that put some water on the wheel. Then the ball, ball start rolling because uh, then we wanted to do this even better. And uh, that's been how we've been doing it the whole way. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever fully know if I'm doing the right thing because I feel like I can always do more. But one thing that I learned earlier this year was just, if you can just help someone and then go out and reach just one more person, that's something that stuck with me was just one more. Just see if you can touch one more life. Like, don't be like, I want to change the world, I want to change this. Just change one life. And that goes such a long way, because if we can all just help one person, I think we'd be set. Well, first off, we got Big T here. Yeah. Full name, please. Trulsvik is Jude. my full Jude. name. I can't roll the R. Yeah. <laughs> and we're here in Norway, a little bit northwest side now. And uh, how do you properly pronounce? So we are at Øveros. Øveros. Yeah, so the place is called Øveros Disc Golf Park. And this is where they host the PCS Open. But uh, we're going to play a practice round with Big T, as I refer to him as, and uh, get a little bit of history about the course and who you are and disc golf here in Norway. Perfect. Can't All wait. right, let's go. Yeah. Both dead center putts right there. When did you start playing disc golf and how did you find disc golf? So I started playing in 2019. Um, this course uh, was started in 2013, so it's been here for a while before mm -hmm. I started playing. Had a lot of friends that played, but I played 
uh, soccer and American football. Uh, and then when um, I moved back home after studying for a while, uh, I f a couple of friends asked me to join for a round and I joined. And after that first round, it took over my life. Wow. <laughs> so just since 2019, it's been all disc golf. All the other sports are gone. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Fight out. That's one hit. That's two hits. That's correct. And then one make. <laughs> People can take pretty big numbers here because they're losing their minds. <laughs> yeah. And you see there's a sign on the left. How do you say that? Koffer skogen. Koffer skogen. Koffer. Koffer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Koffer is like a local legend. He's yeah. one of the main crew. Okay. Um, and he's always ending up there. <laughs> so this is his prime landing spot. Oh, I love it. Because mine's just going to hit it and stop. Oh, look at this. No. Doesn't like that spot. Doesn't like that spot. Like that spot. So the west coast of Norway is famous for a lot of fjords. Yes. So that's like steep mountains and water. Mm -hmm. um, and around us, uh, you can see mountains everywhere. And we also have big fjords. And uh, this is uh, pretty wind heavy because the wind is coming straight out from the North Sea, straight in. So when we have like the certain wind direction, it's pretty difficult, especially on the next hole. And the area is uh, from like the old days, especially here, we had like uh, a lot of Vikings, which is why we have like this team of the park. Uh, oh, the team, yes, yes. Yeah, so this yep. is like, so we, we call it like Ragnarok, mm -hmm. which is like the, the final battle yeah. for the Vikings. And uh, down there, there's like a big Viking grave. Really? Yeah. So we had to check that out. Well, it's probably too far away, but maybe we can get there. Easy, man. All right, so what does this mean, Edelgard? Edelgard is a um, local uh, oh. meat producer or That's butcher. Right. That's, uh, I thought it was something super... Yeah, it's actually historic, Braga. Yeah, yeah. We, so, have, we have a bunch of it in our we, fridge. Yeah, your host. <laughs> That's just a park job. That's not going to get anyone excited. I guess, why is it so Viking heavy out here? It wasn't cool at the time, like what they did. Yes, like, it was, like, were, it was, it was pretty upon. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's like, now it's seen more like cool mm -hmm. because it's so, like it was so long a time ago. Mm -hmm. And it's in very interesting for Norwegian to see how, because we're a small country, but we have had a lot of people moving to like uh, the US, to like the UK and like Ireland and stuff mm -hmm. uh, because the Vikings went over uh, and some of them stayed. So it's kind of like the little Norway putting their touch on different countries. Slip, but still nailed Oh, it. that's nice. I think this is where we go separate ways. You'll play ahead. I'll just go to Jürgen's bar. Jürgen's bar. Yeah, All yeah, right. I think so. Well, thanks for the video. Yeah, thank you. All right, here we show go. Show me how, show me the line. Okay. Okay. What a line. That's probably my best shot for like the <laughs> last five years here, man. You just write Sam. It's not like it's not like you got Dave Denipace's double D's on the disc. <laughs> but like, that's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what are you looking forward to the most about this tournament? Honestly, I, I just love hanging out with people, talking to people and just 
being around good positive energy um, and also being around Tournament Central. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty unique for us in Norway to have this many pros here. And like everyone, like for you instance, like you're a pro and like you're a big star and coming over here for us, it's like a big thing. Like I remember last year, the first time a lot of people came here, uh, just when they saw the mountains and like pic taking picture of the fjords and stuff. It's like uh, a movie. Yeah, but, but for me, it's like, I grew up here. Yeah. So for me, it was like kind of boring. And then I moved to the UK for a year to study. And when I came back, I was just like, oh my God, I have never seen this mountain before. Yeah. And then it's been there my entire yeah. life. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally understand that because I grew up in Huntington Beach in yeah. Los Angeles. And I never understood what the draw was until I moved away. Was my touch shot? It's so low, man. Come on. Oh. Fairway hit. What is like the most unique thing about this property? We're walking up on 16. There's a Viking ship crashed right here on the green. Is there anything that I've missed that I need to see? It's like all these small details. Um, so like the boat is always, I think that's probably the second most photographed piece of the property. The gates of Valhalla is probably the mm -hmm. most one because that's older, but mm -hmm. this is catching up pretty fast because like it's amazing green and it's like those small details. But then even if you look uh, uh, at the barn, when we yes. get up there, you can see at the roof that there's actually like uh, dragon heads so at yeah, the I'm, end of the I'm, roofs. I miss that. So we're going to, okay. Yeah. So we still have one more little Easter egg to find. Yeah. Hit it. <laughs> you don't have to. I got okay. you. I'll just pick up my oh, bag then. I hit that one too though. I just want to know what your expectations are. So last year it was, we were pretty happy with that. Last year was the first time we had a paid entry for a disc golf tournament in Norway. In the whole country. Yeah, wow. and it was like, it was a pretty big discussion about it because disc golf is supposed to be accessible and mm -hmm. uh, like free. Uh, but we had a pretty good turnout. The problem in Norway is that it's very weather dependent. I think we sold out all the VIP tickets. So it's like probably four or five hundred people maybe on each day. Oh, maybe not. That might go in. No, it's going in. Oh! <laughs> oh! I'm way too good for this, man. Hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this video, sharing the history of this course, getting to know you a bit, and um, just how you discovered disc golf. So I just want to thank you for letting me play with you, having the pleasure. I enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to this weekend. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Hopefully putting on a show for you and yeah. the whole squad here. So thanks again. Thank you. It's Tuesday morning. Got a practice round in yesterday. We're going to switch out some discs um, after that practice round to specifically fit this course. So need my straight wrap there for sure. Don't need the vulture this week. And uh, don't need this onyx. And just put an extra force in there for safety. These baskets are what started this course here. Look, there's, there's more. Uh, okay, there's one more. more. Oh! <laughs> that, one needs, that one needs more maintenance. <laughs> that one's got more chains, but these are the original baskets that were this is started this course. Yeah. Very unique things on the property that make it what, you know, the PCS course is and what Ovros itself is. So very well represented with all those things and that's what, you know, makes it so unique. And, and then the parties, I mean, they... They love to make you feel like family there and they love to party with you like your family and they go above and beyond. Like the, the players party was on Tuesday 
because they knew everyone was going to enjoy it so much that they might need a recovery day before the tournament started. So there were some players that fell victim to that and uh, there were some that were able to control themselves and have a great time and still enjoy all the amenities that they had there and, and uh, it was uh, a wild experience um, and the tournament hadn't even started. <laughs> We can just say welcome to the madhouse. If you make this, I will not be supporting it. Especially this guy. Look at Bad this guy. fact, this is the first disc I ever bought. Champion Groove. So here we are with Champion Groove. They should know what to do with it. Norway. Hey, G! Champion Groove. Don't even short. What's up, Ken? And just all the amenities they had there is just is just over the top in a good way. Like they had a crane with a basket for who knows why until you went to the players party. If you went to the players party, you know why there's a basket on a crane. Um, but uh, you know that they had food, drinks. Um, Brage owns like a, a meat company, like a. I don't know if it's a butcher shop or what it is, but, but all the food is like from his company there that they're serving. So you know it's quality or else they wouldn't be eating it themselves. This course isn't like anything else. Like it's, it's so European. I, it's hard to describe what that is. Like it's unique, it's different, it's special. And I can't say I've seen other holes that are even similar in, in a lot of cases. The arrangement, um, the tree placement a lot of times, the curvature and the carving of these fairways, uh, it's very demanding. Um, you gotta land shots on pinpoint accuracy on these very narrow fairways. It's very uh, sweet spot and landing zone oriented, but it's, it's the shortest course or shortest layout on the entire Disc Golf Pro Tour, yet they make it extremely hard to land a lot of your shots safe. Uh, we also uh, have got a lot of feedback from players playing and, and uh, taking advice from them how to design, make the holes better. I remember the first years, we almost, the idea was just to, to make a hole as, as uh, long as possible on that area. And uh, now we, I think we understand better how to, how to make a, a decent hole. I was thinking about having a team on the PCS open and the Ragnarok uh, for a long time uh, but I couldn't figure out what it should be but um, in the summer of 2019 uh, I was on a vacation together with my family and we were in a theme park uh, riding roller coasters and then we went on this uh, water uh, roller coaster ish and the boat went through a landscape of Viking. And then I start thinking about, wow, we can use something like this back home. Because uh, the whole uh, area is well known uh, back to the 700 uh, that the Viking King were living here and rule the area of the fjords. Uh, a Viking king called, uh, called King Bulun. And uh, I remember when I was, uh, this was just a few weeks before 
the PCS Open 2019 when Eagle won the tournament. I think that at least for uh, people coming from abroad, the Viking theme makes everything more exotic and uh, it's a typical Norwegian and Nordic theme and it makes the course even more special. It actually used to be a Viking king was living in the area here, just by the sea. So a lot of the course design is inspired by him. And I remember he said, uh, it's only 19 days to, till the tournament. There's no time to do something like this. And I said, yeah, but I really want to do it. And he said, okay, if you, <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you take the responsibility that uh, we will make it, uh, let's go. So then we started to find some material, uh, see if it used the excavator to dig some huge holes so we could fill with concrete so it wouldn't fall down when we raised it. And uh, we actually built this porch that you see on today's Ragnarok. And uh, with a help from a good friend who carved in uh, the ladders on the top, top there, and yeah, I think it looks amazing. <laughs> it does. It's uh, it's a really nice frame for the first basket. So you're basically throwing out these gates right now, which means you're going into battle, and uh, that's the first tee. You got the gates, you got the big old platform, and then on the left side you got the world's biggest basket where it's actually to scale. Um, and then, so you're playing next to that on hole one, hole two, you're coming back. And they have a lot of unique little ponds throughout the property where they're not like lose your disc kind of pond, they're just kind of there as trouble. We like to offer something more than just a competition. And we call it the PCS Open Experience. We want people to have an unforgettable experience both on the course and also off the course. And being located in such a unique area with a lot of really big uh, tourist attractions around us, we, we think everyone who comes here should experience something more than just playing three rounds on our course. It's a testament to the hard work and drive and passion and the support you know, that PCS draws in to have the beginning establishment and founding of this club all the way 10 years later to have a Disc Golf Pro Tour event here. Um, they work so hard tirelessly they get very little sleep up here um, even in the winter time they're always working and constructing and building something waiting for the next year and i'd asked uh Brage early in the week is this something you're going to hold every year like i know what the strain is as far as your time commitment but then you have family and, and business and and everything else to attend to can you guys do this every year can you keep up this kind of pace you've ramped it up and built it up so much can you keep that every year or is it more of a every other year kind of thing like the European Open has done or the Japan Open has done in the past. And they haven't made a decision yet. They're gonna, they're gonna to kind of evaluate things, but what they put on now these days, you know, bringing in food trucks and bringing in entertainment and bringing in the, the beer garden, it just adds so much more of an amenity to if you're a spectator in the area or anywhere in Norway, you know, you're probably making the drive up here to, to watch, you know, some of the rounds and definitely be here for the final round and the and the crown of the champion. Oh, it's been a big change in uh, the last year, uh, years. So uh, to play the course now, it's uh, it's uh, really nice. And um, Sievert, you know, is uh, doing a huge job on the course. He asked also me and Brage how we want to, is this good or what do you think? And, um, uh, but he used so many hours on this course and uh, Seabird is uh, amazing. Vestness itself and the local area, I think they're catching on. They promote it really well. They have lots of flyers around town. They have like the get together kind of uh, disc golf demo downtown with the putting games and vendors and this and that. Just kind of hype it up and build it up to let people know this is happening. But we've been in the newspaper every single year and every single day of the tournament every single year just to hype it and build it. I think the first time maybe locals saw it, you know, reading through the paper, oh, disc golf sounds cool. And I think the more they saw it, they're like, wow, this is a real thing. This is something happening here. Maybe I need to go check it out.
but you're in a very remote place in the world and I don't think we're drawing a lot of locals so much, but I think we're drawing a lot more clubs and a lot more players throughout the region and throughout the country to come check this place out. Yeah, we're uh, on our way to an Eagle Safari. That means we're going out on a boat and throwing a bunch of fish in the air and calling in a bunch of eagles. I'm not sure what kind of eagles. They look golden, I would assume, but maybe like some kind of different Norwegian eagle. But I've seen photos, I've seen video. As many times as I've been here, I've actually never heard about it until last year, and I couldn't skip the opportunity to check it out. So. We got a crew together today. We're kind of gathering everybody last minute. And we're going to rip out there to a boat and uh, go check out some eagles in the beautiful waters of Norway. Not always this clear, this bright. But it is July. Most of the times I've been here is September and it's cloudy, overcast, rain. Wow, this is exciting. Eagle Safari in the fjords of Norway. I've only heard about it. I can't wait to experience it. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just Americans, you know? Action, huh? I was good to see a couple eagles at least. I was uh, curious and wonder if we're gonna see anything today. So it's too warm out. 65 degrees is too warm, I guess, here for the eagles to fly. I like the colder weather, but could pick a better day to be on the water in a boat, ripping around the fjords of Norway. Incredible day spent. That was uh, quite the experience. That's the one thing you got to do with uh, you know these kind of tournaments and exotic destinations is get the the full experience of going to you know the Troll Stegen and uh, going out and venturing out and going on journeys on boats and checking out eagles and fjords and just man Norway's got so much to offer you got to check it out you got to be part of it competition is most important obviously but uh, take it all in and absorb what's going on that's uh, something you'll never forget. You know, the PCS crew and everything that they did is just so over the top in a, in a really fun way. Um, they had uh, the players meeting, had a Viking, had this crazy singer, just it, pure entertainment the, the whole way through. Uh, I don't think there was a single person there that could say that they didn't have a great time or just enjoyed their time at the tournament. You know, even if you took dead last or didn't play well, you were having a great time because uh, that crew was taking care of you. And, and it, it comes with countless volunteers. And Bara i kvällsten 
Bahar ekvel stundar i gang Stäng ikke vägen For jeg vil fylle Guds folk til strid over berg og bylja Jeg er fra meg Jeg er en pilgrim bara i kvällsten Fyll jag och lär mig, fyll jag och lär mig av dig. When I got to the river load, so lonesome I wanted to die. So, got to play with Eagle, Calvin, Bartley round one. It was a battle. Calvin and Eagle and myself shot eight or better. Um, the hot round was nine. Barsby, unfortunately, the returning champ did not fare well. I am impressed with some of the scores coming out of here, honestly. When you're shooting nine down, 10 down, you're getting half of these holes. It means you're playing clean. It means you're not getting in trouble. And it means you're getting through and getting a lot of looks. Uh, you need to be hot with the putter. The forehand needs to be dialed. There's at least seven tee shots that are they're very heavy advantage on the forehand and even a few of the approaches where you might get caught off line where you got to save it or bring it over the top with a forehand and a lot of big shots a lot of heavy shots but the par fours are short and if you're a big thrower like a like a barella or a eagle um, you can get to some of these spots maybe even cheat the corners and get way up there where there may be a little chip shot threes but this course for the most part is diabolical in so many ways. There's some holes out there that will, I've never seen some, some of the scores I've ever seen at tournaments at this caliber when you're hearing about eights, nines, tens, elevens, twelves outside of USDGC. And this course is producing that not with length, but with very narrow lines through the woods, landing zones, off angle turns and dog legs and they've created something special. It's good balance of forehand, good balance of backhand. The shapes are good, the variety is good, and I think it's only gonna get better. All right, back at the house, just changed. Gonna go have some fun, but the round was, I wish it was like the weather right now. It was a little gray, windy but right now it's pretty calm and beautiful. Um, but uh, didn't shoot what I wanted, but still only two off the lead behind Proctor and Calvin. And uh, got the goose on the card tomorrow, got two on him. So it's a, uh, goose can always jump back in it. Same with Eagle, but right now it's gonna be those two and then me right behind them. So we'll see how this turns out. But if you look out to your, your left, your right, sorry, my left. Where you go? You can see a wild babcock over there to the right. <laughs> but we're gonna go uh, 
in these mountains somewhere and uh, I'm sure you'll capture some footage and show it off, but it's, uh, it's a beauty. We're at Trollstegen, Trollstegen, I don't know exactly how you say it, but we're in a beautiful place, I know that much. 10 out of 10, would visit again. This is actually our second time here, so. You it's already have. It. I have visited it again, so. I would do it a third time, though. And then uh, the new person on the card was James Proctor joined. He shot well, so that was the lead card day two. Battled out again. Um, just Calvin and uh, Calvin and Proctor uh, beat me by two strokes. They had two strokes going into the final round, so it was a battle between the three of us. And uh, Aaron Gossage snuck on the lead card. He was two behind me, four off the lead. So it was kind of the three of us were a little bit outside of. Uh, the rest of the field at that point so it was I felt like it was a three horse race when they come to hole 18 today I think it will be magic we have this weather now we have so many crowd here uh, and so many volunteers who will uh, do the crowd control so I think this will be maybe one of the most magic uh, final in this world This is the kind of drama that they've been hoping for. You know, as tournament organizers, you want to have it where it's not just some player coming in here and running away with it. Uh, the players that are in the lead, they're averaging nine down a round. They're getting half the holes each round, and that's spectacular. And even Proctor going nine down first round, nine down second round, bogey free. To get through clean and not have a bogey, like I saw some of even, I think, get a couple par saves after out of bounds throws. and. Phenomenal. He's been playing great all year. Um, really, really stoked to see him at the top and, and playing so well and everything's clicking. I've known him for a long time as even a younger player. Always a big thrower, but for him to be able to dial it back on some of these holes and have the versatility, I think, uh, bodes well for this kind of course. Calvin Heinberg, all kinds of range, all kinds of distance. Uh, killer on the green. He can putt from anywhere. Um, having them two battled out at 18 down, um, it's going to be great. And then Macbeth, I think he's in the position he likes to be in. He don't like to be in the lead as much. I think he gets a little more drive. It's more like a shark with blood in the water kind of thing when he's got to chase somebody down and catch them. He likes putting that kind of pressure on. So two strokes back, Macbeth, you can never count him out. He's a perennial favorite no matter what tournament he's playing. And he's on a hot streak right now. I think he's going for three in a row in Europe. So. Having that and to round out the lead card, uh, course record holder at this point, Aaron Gossage shot a 10 down yesterday. So the only double digit round scored on this new layout and configuration. Um, coming off a hot round, he posts another one of those, he could sneak up and, and take it. So it's gonna be good drama at the top. And I don't know if we're gonna see a chase card victor this time with that stout of talent at the top and in the, in the top four in the lead card. It's gonna be one of those guys and man, I think whoever it is, uh, me and Barsby have been talking about it. 
whoever wins this tournament, you know, in the, in the spirit of the game, in the spirit of the Viking, I hope they let out that victorious Viking roar. And final round, unfortunately, Calvin started off so slow that uh, he kind of fell out of it. And Proctor was off just on an incredible pace. Birding one, birding two, birding three, birding, missing four, birding five, birding six. Oh, he missed six, but um, just being on an incredible pace to where I shot seven down in the first nine holes and only gained one stroke on him. So I was still trailing by one going into the back nine. And uh, hole 10 is kind of just, you get, a, you get a par and you move on. 11, very similar, but he threw his drive OB, unfortunately, and uh, we tied it up right there. And then after that, hole 12, I ended up birding. I threw a great drive and uh, was finally in a position to look at a birdie. And uh, he hit very early, so he was looking at bogey at best. And um, I was able to put my drive over the top, put it edge of the circle, knock that putt down, take two strokes. And at that point, I felt like I was in control. I was flowing. I was, I was, uh, I was not. I was eight down through 12 at that point. Um, and the back nine is where I'd been playing so well. So um, I was able to shoot a 13 under, course record by three and then beat the field that day by five. So I ended up winning the tournament by, by five, and uh, just an incredible week to have everything click that way. And then the after party at the PCS Open was insane. I was just there for the award ceremony. The award ceremony took three hours. Like, I guess it's a Viking award ceremony. So it took three hours at dinner, them thanking every sponsor they had, every volunteer, some awards, and then the player award ceremony. So that took three hours. And then the party started. But uh, I left, I went to go pack my stuff. And then at about midnight or 1 a.m. I was like, oh, we leave really early. I need to go say bye to, <laughs> bye to the big three and, and the volunteers. So we went back down there. That was about a two hour adventure to find everyone. Like it was just incredible. So enjoyed, uh, enjoyed my time in Vestness, Ovros, and uh, the PCS Open. What more can I say? Can't wait to come back, be a part of that again, and uh, defend, defend the title that I hopped that I fought so hard for and uh, gave a Viking roar for. I just want to say that I want to a special thank, thank for uh, thanks to our volunteers. That's the most important for me, to show them uh, that this is not possible if, uh, if they didn't uh, do like the, they do. They work day and night and uh, that's so important. We're totally dependent on all the, of all the volunteers here. I think we have more than 100 people listed as volunteers. And everyone is a, is a piece of the puzzle. Um, it's also fun to see how things have developed the last years. Um, the first years we were doing this, I think no one really knew what, what disc golf was and what PCS Open was. And now having this uh, big event, we see that uh, local people realize that we actually bring a lot of value to, to, to the region and the local people are buying uh, hotel rooms and uh, clothes and food and uh, yeah, I, think, I think it brings a lot of value to, to everyone here. It would be impossible to have the PCS open without the volunteers. The volunteers are the PCS open. Uh, and this year we have 113 volunteers uh, standing up for the tournament, working day and night to make this happen. And 
they all have different roles. They are all dressed in or orange. Uh, yeah, we have the black. Yeah, we have the pink. But underneath, everybody has the orange. And uh, the, the volunteers are just work, working the butts off making this happen. There's so many good people. It's uh, Frode, Gunnar, it's... I can't describe it, how much I, I appreciate what they do for us. I feel like that now and even better, you know. Uh, this is uh, what you dream about before the tournament start. But you, when you see it's really happen, then you get... Uh, it's... Uh, yeah, I can I can't describe how uh, how this is, but uh, yeah. So I'm really 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 happy. Of course, I think all of us, all the team, and especially maybe we that live here, are extremely proud of what we have created. And uh, hearing all those uh, all this good feedback on the course and everything, it's it makes us very proud. When we opened for registration, red, uh, registration on the tournament uh, this year, we were very curious of uh, who many big players would sign in. And uh, I think uh, we checked the list many ta times a day to see if there were any new players. And of course, when we saw that Paul Macbeth were signed in, uh, everybody went over. Uh, stoked and uh, it, it was a huge thing to see that uh, a player like Paul McBeth were coming here to play in our backyard. That's uh, unbelievable. Well it's been a great time here in Vestness. Norway's been incredible, the tournament incredible, fans, competition was incredible. But uh, that's it for Norway in this year. Next up, Finland. <laughs>